In this video, we continue to look at ways to create carboxylic acid products. In this particular reaction, working with a Grignard reagent and dry ice, also known as CO2, as the chemical formula of dry ice, what we are going to be doing is both creating a new carbon-carbon bond between the Grignard reagent R group here and the CO2 carbon. And in addition to creating that new carbon-carbon bond, we are also going to be able to create a carboxylic acid salt functional group, which we can then add acid to to bring in the proton necessary to give us a carboxylic acid product as the final product of this particular reaction. As we dig into this a bit further, let's go ahead and take a look at the mechanism for this reaction and do some example problems of how we can use this. So we're gonna go ahead and sketch out the mechanism for this reaction of reacting a Grignard reagent with CO2. So our Grignard reagent, I'm gonna plug in just generically here for now as R MGX, where X is a halogen. R is whatever our carbon containing group is here. It can be an SP, SP2, or SP3 carbon bonded to the magnesium. It doesn't matter. It's very, very flexible. And then from there, we react it with CO2, which I'm going to go ahead and draw out CO2 as uh, Lewis structure here. The most stable resonance structure for CO2 is what I have drawn there. That's the one I'm using. And so what's going to happen in this reaction is in the first step, much like with Grignard reactions, where we're reacting a Grignard reagent with some carbonyl containing compound before, is that the nucleophilic, the nucleophilic Grignard R group is going to attack and form a covalent bond with the electrophilic, which I'll put in as EL for electrophilic, carbonyl carbon. So we can show that happening like so. So our Grignard reagent here, we can think of that as behaving like the R group carbon that's directly bonded to the magnesium, behaves as a carb anion because of the fact that the bond between magnesium and carbon is so polarized with carbon being more electronegative than magnesium, carbon takes the lion's share of the electrons from that bond. And therefore we can think of that carbon as having a negative formal charge in terms of how it behaves. And that is going to enable that carbon to act as a nucleophile. Nucleophiles, as we've seen time and time again, are very drawn to electrophilic carbons, and when they can, are going to attack that electrophilic carbon. And in so doing, that's going to require that one of the two pi bonds here or here, it doesn't matter which of these two pi bonds you take, just pick one, is going to have to go up onto the carbon so that the oxygen does not end up exceeding the octet rule. So I'll go ahead and draw out the product of this. We had our R group, which is whatever carbon containing group we want there. And that carbon containing group, formed a covalent bond that I'm putting in red to our carbonyl group, which I'm putting in black. That carbonyl group of CO2 has one carbon oxygen single bond. That's the one I'm highlighting in the reactant is the one that will become the carbon oxygen single bond. The other carbon oxygen bond remains that carbon oxygen pi bond. So let's go ahead and draw that out. We have our carbon oxygen pi bond, and then we have our carbon oxygen single bond right here three sets of lone pair electrons there on the oxygen, and this is our carboxylate anion. Remember that ATE is going to indicate to us that this is a negatively charged species. It's our carboxylate anion. And then the molecule will hang out like this until we add to the reaction mixture acid and by adding acid to the reaction mixture, that creates a source of protons where our oxygen anion 
by an acid-base reaction, the oxygen anion acts as a base, grabbing a proton from the acid to ultimately yield our final product, which will be a carboxylic acid. And that carboxylic acid will have extended the carbon chain of our starting material by one carbon because we formed a new carbon-carbon bond in the course of this reaction as well. When we brought in the Grignard reagent and reacted it with CO2, that created this new carbon-carbon bond that I'm highlighting up here in our intermediate in the upper right corner. We made that new carbon-carbon bond and we also got a carboxylic acid group out of this reaction. So it's a way to make a new carbon-carbon bond, so increasing the complexity of the molecule and introducing a carboxylic acid functional group into the molecule. It's a really useful way for doing that. And the reaction absolutely has to be done sequentially with first bringing in the Grignard reagent and then adding the acid. So this sequence has to be in place of first bringing in the Grignard reagent and then secondly adding the acid because Grignards will react with acids. And so as a result, as has been the case in the other Grignard reactions that we've looked at previously, it is absolutely essential that in this first stage of the reaction that we meticulously protect our reactants from access to protic solvents. And so that's why generally the solvent for this reaction is usually an ether or some other aprotic solvent, a solvent that can't donate a proton to the reaction. Because otherwise, due to the fact that Grignard reagents, in addition to being nucleophiles, they're also strong bases. As a result, if there are any sources of available protons from even relatively weak acids such as water, the Grignard reagent will quickly react in an acid-base reaction with that base rather than acting as a nucleophile to attack the carbonyl group. And that's because acid-base reactions are so incredibly fast. And so what I mean here is if you have a Grignard reagent, which I'll go ahead and um, abbreviate out as R minus MGX, where X is our halogen, with a positive charge in the magnesium. And we bring in any source of proton that is available here. So I'll put that in just as H plus. What's going to happen is that the Grignard reagent carbon that acts as a carbanion is gonna act as a strong base. It's gonna form a covalent bond to that proton, giving us RH as our product of this reaction rather than creating a new carbon-carbon bond because this acid-base reaction is very, very fast. And so therefore we have to be careful in meticulously protecting our Grignard reagent from any source of a proton donor. And that proton donor could be something as simple as water. And so as a result, you have to dry your glassware and things before you work with a Grignard reagent. Otherwise you will get undesired side reactions where the Grignard reagent will grab protons from the water that is in the environment. So let's walk through this specific example problem to make sure we have the hang of how to do this particular reaction. We're starting with phenyl magnesium bromide as our organic reactant here. And we could also have abbreviated the aromatic ring there as just a pH group. So don't be alarmed if you see this abbreviated as just pH. That refers to this aromatic ring here that's directly bonded to magnesium bromide in this case. And to show the mechanism for this, let's go ahead and draw this out to illustrate how this structure, this Grignard reagent, is going to behave. It's going to behave as if the carbon-magnesium bond that I'm highlighting in orange is so polarized that the carbon, the more electronegative atom, in this bond is going to have possession of the lone pair of electrons. That lone pair of electrons coming from this covalent bond here. The bond is so highly polarized that we think of that carbon as having full possession of those electrons. So that is going to act as our nucleophile in this reaction. And as acting as our nucleophile, when we see what we're reacting with, we have our CO2, our carbonyl containing compound here. 
like so. And so in the first step, what's going to happen is that the nucleophilic Grignard is going to attack the electrophilic carbonyl. And so we can go ahead and show that happening, bringing our lone pair of electrons from our Grignard reagent over, attacking the carbonyl group. That forces the pi electrons out into the oxygen here and makes a new carbon-carbon bond there. So I'm going to highlight that new carbon-carbon bond in our product of this reaction in blue to follow with this electron pushing arrow color. And our CO2 group will have our carbonyl, our carbon oxygen single bond as well, like so, giving us this as our carboxylate product of this reaction. And now to go from here to the carboxylic acid, we wait until we have added the dilute acid to the reaction mixture after this reaction has totally taken place and gone to completion. So we bring in the acid then, and what's going to happen here is just an acid-base reaction where our oxygen anion acts as the base, grabs a proton from whatever acid we are using. We'll go ahead here and create our product, which in this case is going to be benzoic acid. So we've made benzoic acid by reacting phenyl magnesium bromide starting material with CO2 and then acidifying the reaction mixture 